when you buy a share, when you're in the market, it might be kind of helpful for you if you understand the parts of the shear and why they're made a certain way. When you buy a shear, some things you're not gonna you're not gonna know just by looking at a shear, like the alloy that's in what kind of steel it's made out of. If you baked a cake, you'd have a little flour and a little sugar and an egg and some milk and so on. And steel is made the same way. Uh, they put, take a little bit of uh, steel and they, they put some chromium and nickel in it, makes it stainless. They put some cobalt in it, raises up the quality of the shear a little bit. Uh, and, but they don't call it a recipe like they do with cooking, they call it an alloy, but it's, it's the same thing, just exactly the same thing. Um, there are some, the way shears are made, there are four different kinds of, of processes that I know of. There are a, a stamped shear, which is kind of like a cookie cutter, it's, it's got a rolls of steel and it, and it goes through a press and it just stamps them out and then they make a shear that way. Those are the ones that usually have a plastic handle on them. And then you've got uh, cast shears. They take molten metal and they, and they literally pour it into a mold like you would like jello, except it's, it's steel and, it, and then they form the shear. And then there is uh, forged shears. They take a big hunk of metal and they heat it up to cherry red and they got a press and it bam! Hits that thing kind of like the blacksmith does at the livery stable. You know, he, he uh, hits that steel and, it, it, and, then, and then they form it out of that. And then a shear like this one is what they call a four-piece construction. They take a handle and then the blade, the blade is just a block of steel. And they weld them together and then they got a bunch of big grinding wheels and different uh, steps along the way and they, they forge out by hand, end up with a, with a shear. Okay, if you lay your shear down on a, on a flat table and look down on it, you're going to see that in, this, in the center part right here on the inside, there's a dip in the metal. That's called the hollow grind. Very, very important. And the reason that's there is when shears were first made, they were just two flat pieces of metal stuck together, and they would they would they would cut. But there was, if they got wet, water got inside. It caused a suction, and didn't want to let, didn't want them to let go. Take a couple pieces of glass and put some water in it, and, and put it together, and try to pull them apart. You'll see what I'm talking about. So they put that hollow grind in there, relieve that, let, let the shear open and close even when they're wet. Um, if you look at your shear on the back side, right, right behind the screw area, there's a little horseshoe looking area. That's called the bearing of the shear. Very, very important also. On the inside, right, if you look at, lay it on the table and look straight down on it, Right on the cutting edge, there's a little line that goes there. Single most important thing that happens when they make that shear or when it's sharpened. Very, very important that that line, right line be done right. Some people call it a hone line, but whatever you want to call it, that's it's very important uh, as it makes the shear smooth when it opens and closes and it'll be, it, it helps it, the shear be much sharper. Okay, on the outside of the shear, some shears are made with a bevel with an angle about like this. Anywhere from I don't know, 15, 20 degrees, those are usually the ones, shears that have a little serration, little teeth on them. And then some shears are a little steeper. And a shear like this one is called a hamaguri edge. The edge is really steep. You get stuff like this, and it's, that's put on with a belt sander uh, with, a, with a little give in the, as the belt runs around and gives a little bit, and they push that on there. The steeper the angle, the sharper the shear will be because you've got less uh, metal on the cutting edge. It's a lot, lot thinner. The fatter the angle, the, the sh shallower the, the angle is, there, it's a beefier scissor, more durable edge, but they won't cut as good. So there's a trade-off involved. If, if you have a Hamaguri edge, it has a very, very steep angle. Over here on the other side you get a, a shear that's, that's kind of flat. They don't cut as good, but they're more durable. This one is more fragile, but it, it, it's uh, it, it cuts real nice. So there's a trade-off involved when you, when you talk about that. Okay, when they make a shear, you've got three different handles to choose from. And I've got these drawn up here ahead of time. You've got the opposing grip handle, and you've got an offset handle, and this is called a crane handle. Now the, the, off, the, the, the opposing grip, right down the center line of the shear, if you lay it if you were to lay your shear down on the table and take a pencil or some straight edge and put it right down the center, you're going to notice one ring's on this side, one ring's on this side, and they're both the same length. It comes down like this. 
right down the center, and then they're both both the same length there. The offset, the center line also runs down the center between the rings, but now the thumb is just a little bit shorter. And what the reason for that is it relaxes your thumb. When you when you put your thumb in that shear, you don't have to pull it over quite so tight and make that muscle gets a little tighter there. And then the, the, the crane handle is, is the handles are, are very similar in this part in the bottom part of the shear, but the top part, what they do they from the screw out, they bend the handles down. So the center line on this one runs down through the ring. Like that. Now the difference between this one and this one, and, and this step is in the middle of course, they're aimed in different directions. The, the opposing grip on this side, your elbow is up here when you're cutting. The, the crane handle, is because the blades are bent down, it brings your elbow down as you're more relaxed, and it also relaxes your thumb a little bit. Now if you're one of these people who just have to cut like this, and you've got a, and you've got a crane handle, well that's going to, that, that, when you turn the shear upside down to cut with it, it makes you bring your elbow back up to get it level. Kind of defeats the purpose of having, having a shear that way. We'll talk, talk about that a little bit later in avoiding corporal tunnel problems. Let's touch real briefly on length of blade. Very, very important. Um, some people like a short blade here, and some people like a longer blade. This is the same shear. With a shorter shear, you're only going to use half the blade anyway, or thereabouts. Snip, 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 snip. Longer blade, because you, you're, the part, your usable part of the shear is much longer than that part of it. When you cut with this one, snip, snip, and you're done, which means you're less time involved in the haircut, less wear and tear on the shear because you're not opening and closing as, as often, and less wear and tear on your hand. So when you get done at the end of the day, when you're not, when you're not beating yourself to death, you're, you're, you may not be dragging your knuckles when you walk out the door, and that's, that's a very important consideration as well.